Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, the creator of Asteroid Dig, Atomic Trail, and recently In and Out Night Burglar, a jam game that did pretty well. So the first thing I want to talk about is this whole art, mechanics, usability, marketing setup I set up at the beginning of the first video. I realized that's not how I do my game dev work, so why would I make videos that way? So from now on, they're just going to come as they come, and whatever I do that week is what I will talk about. Cool? Cool. So I'm just going to go down the list of things that I did, and things that took longer, I'll talk about more. Things that didn't take so long, I won't talk about it all. So the first thing was to get rid of those mobile controls that you could see on screen, because they just didn't look good. So now they're gone. The guy still does what he does. He still follows your touch on the screen, but now they're gone. The next thing was to size the UI for mobile so it was a little bigger and a little easier to see on a smaller screen like a phone. I basically just took the art, scaled it up a little bit, added some more pixels to it, added some more shading, and that way it didn't just look like I was scaling up things or scaling things to infinity like I said in my first video. The thing that I was putting off for no reason uh, was the pause and menu system for the game. I've put them in a couple of games now, including my jam game. If I was able to squeeze it into a jam game, I think I should be able to put it into a game when I'm leisurely going through it and updating it. So it's basically just a single variable on off uh, toggle that when it's off, time scale is uh, set to zero and then the menu comes up. And when it's put back on again, time scale goes back to one. So everything runs again at one times the speed is supposed to go at. And then the menu goes away. That's it. It's very simple. I had to set it up so that the timer also stopped because I'm not sure how that works with GDevelop, but my timer is set up so that it's a separate timer from the, the motion of things happening in-game. If it's toggled off, the timer can't flick to the next number, so that basically just stopped the timer. Next I added gold tutorial text, so when you finish the first tutorial screen, the next thing you're supposed to do was buy gold, and that way you would have gold into your game the next time you went in. But if you didn't have any way of knowing that that's what you're supposed to do, you wouldn't do it. So I put up a text for that. The next thing was figuring out the save and load system, which was really easy, actually. But I beat my head up against the wall for a good, a good day and a half trying to figure it out. And I'll put on screen now why it took me so long to figure this out. You see this? This nonsense is what I was sent when I asked how to do a save and load system. What does any of that mean? If you have never done any coding before, you've never done a save and load system before, what does that mean? It's just a big sentence of text with like three or four different variables going three or four different ways. It just... and then parse? You parsing a JSON file? Which again, I, I still don't understand fully. But when somebody asks how do you make a save system, you don't give them that. You give them... Well, you do give them that, but you first get them to save a single variable and then reload that into the game, which is what I did. After reading the wiki, I found out how to do this, and it's very straightforward. Um, not nearly as scary as that previous image made it out to be, but it's basically this. So saving and loading in GDevelop uses write and read. So write action writes a variable that you want to save into a, an external storage. And then the read action takes that from that external storage and puts it back in the game. And that's it. So now you have a variable that gets put back in the game externally that you can load when the game starts again. And once you have that those basics down, you can do that for everything. The, the character's position, the amount of money they had, how much health they had left, all that stuff. But you basically just need to figure out how to do that once with a single variable and then move on from there, which is what I did. After sending this version to a couple of people to playtest, they came back with a few results that I really should have expected. Um, a few of them being that it wasn't actually sized for mobile phones. The UI was changed and all these things were changed and the touchscreen controls were there, but the size of the screen was wrong. It was your standard laptop size, not, uh, not sized appropriately for a phone. So one quick uh, Google search later, I found out that the most common size, according to Google, for a phone screen was 720 by 1280. So after throwing that onto my screen, I realized I had to rechange. I had to realign everything all over again. After finishing that, I moved on to a few little tweaks here and there, including updating the tutorial text because it still said use WASD to move, which is obviously not a thing anymore because it's touchscreen. 
So now it says hold on the screen and the astronaut will try to go towards your hold point, which makes a little more sense. I was planning on redoing the buttons for the operations screen where you uh, have the shop in the menu where you buy things. But now that they're not overlapping the ship anymore, they don't clash and so they don't need to be redone. I can leave those the way they are. Talking with a few people who playtested the game, uh, I was able to figure out that the control scheme was apparently awkward. I'm still not entirely convinced that it's the control scheme, but instead the information the player needs to control the character properly. Because without any way to know how to control them, you really have to kind of guess, and if you guess wrong, then you're going to be confused about how to control the character the whole way through the game. So I changed the tutorial text and zoomed out the camera, and hopefully that makes the game more approachable for people who are just, just starting to play it for the first time. If it turns out that that's not the case and people still find the controls to be confusing and annoying and frustrating, I will have to concede and change the control system to something a little more user-friendly. After, again, after some playtesting um, and then having people give me some feedback, a lot of people were confused about the first screen and how come there was nothing there. It was just a big empty room that you bounced around in for 30 seconds until the game pulled you out and put you into the, the operations screen again. And at the end of the day, I just threw that in because I was new and I didn't understand what, how players perceived goals and how without a direct goal that 30 seconds was just frustrating and confusing. Whereas if I gave them a, something to go after, um, they would try to get it, right? They would learn the controls better because they had an objective to get to and they had a reason to learn the controls. So I made gold a starting resource. You don't have to buy it anymore, you just start with it. Uh, which makes the game... that. It just makes the game's opening scene a lot easier to digest. And then finally I did some quality of life things uh, to realign the text and so on for a phone oriented game, such as um, realigning the text in the shop menu and in game and enlarging some of the text and then going to the windscreen and enlarging some of that and then again going to the opening screen and enlarging that little button that says click to begin. And that's basically it. That was everything I got done since the last devlog. Uh, it's actually a lot. It took it was two pages of notes just to write this video. And the next one is going to be specifically doing things that I got as feedback. Uh, like curving the player and the blocks so you don't get stuck on it anymore. Curving the edges. Um, upsizing the timer and the score to make it a little more... You can see it on smaller phones. Credit the font because I didn't do that. The font I got for free off a website and I haven't done that yet, so I don't want to miscredit somebody or not credit them at all for the work they did. Then I needed to change the timer upgrade. Right now it doesn't do anything at all, which means if you spend money on it, you're going to lo just lose that money, which I apologize for. But I need to turn it into a passive, and once that's done, then when you, when you buy it, your maximum time per round is going to just increase so you're in the game longer. And for when the player goes above the screen, like the, the blocks carry you up above, I'm going to add a, to a arrow that shows where your character is at that time, so you, you have the ability to bring him back down because you know where he is to bring him down. Hopefully that will help with the confusion of why your character is, above, is suddenly off the screen when you turn away for a second. So that's it for this devlog. Um, if you enjoyed this devlog, please like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff. And uh, if you want to hang out with me, my Discord link is down below. And if you choose to do that, I'll see you there.